they've got a nice problem from a really cool book called Towards Higher Mathematics by Richard Earle. So let's see what this problem is. So we're gonna say that something called a block fountain is an arrangement of circles into rows satisfying two rules. The first is that each row is a continuous block of circles. So that means something like this, three circles in a row is allowed, whereas something like this, where you've got a circle and then you skip a space and you have another circle, that is not allowed. And then the second rule is that every circle touches exactly two circles on a previous row. So this doesn't make sense for the first row, so we exempt the first row from this. Next up, we'll introduce the notation that b sub n is the number of block fountains with n circles on the first row. And our goal is to find a closed form for b sub n. So it's pretty easy to draw pictures for small values of n and see that b sub 1 is 1, b sub 2 is 2, and then you can draw some more and see that b sub 3 is 5. But even after that, it's kind of hard to keep track of all of the possibilities, and it's easy to miss some. So you might be able to figure out that b sub 4 is 13, but even then it's easy to miss some. So we need some sort of other strategy. Our strategy will be to come up with some sort of recursion on this number b sub n. Okay, so let's ha see how we can do that, and let's get a picture of what's going on on the board. Okay, so there's a mock-up of what's going on here. So I've got my first row, which has n total circles. And then above that, we're going to describe the second row. Notice that it, it could have zero circles, so we could be done right here. It could have a single circle up to n minus one circles. And we just have to count all of those possibilities. Okay, so let's notice that there are exactly one ways to put zero circles on this second row, and that, well, it's obviously just leaving it open. So let's just start with one plus, and then the next number will be the number of ways with one circle on second. And then I think you can maybe see where we're going. Next up, it'll be the number of ways to put two circles on the second row. And then we're going to go all the way up to the maximum number of circles on the second row. And we'll have the number, the number of ways with n minus one circles on the second row. And so let's see if we can count this up. So let's bring this problem down. So we have one plus. And now let's look at the number of ways to put one circle on the second row. Well, we could put a circle right here, so that would be an okay placement for our single circle. We could put a placement right here, so that would be an okay place to put a second circle. Right here in the middle, all the way up right here in the middle. But how many little spots are there between those circles? Well, there are exactly n minus one spots. Okay, so how many ways can we put one circle in the second row? Well, there are n minus one places for those circles, but then each of those circles will nominally build a block diagram or a block fountain with exactly one circle in the first row. So this doesn't really do anything here, but I'm gonna put a b sub one here to exhibit the like block fountain that's being built off of that. So we put our base of our block fountain, you know, between one of these sets of circles, and then we build it up. So that'll be the number of ways that we can build such a block fountain. Okay, and now let's maybe talk about the next bit. And so that'll be the number of ways to put two circles on the second row. Well, notice that we could definitely start the first of our two circles right here, and then we would have a circle right here and a circle right here. Or we could start our two circles right here and we'd have a circle right here and a circle right here, or so on and so forth. But we are not allowed to put our first circle for our second row in that last spot because then the next circle would be over here and it would only touch one on the one below. So that means there are n minus two starting positions for our two circles on the second row. But we're not just building two circles on the second row, we're building a block fountain out of those. 
And so we'll have n minus two times the number of block fountains with two circles on the first row. So that'll be times B2. And then maybe the structure is coming together here. So we'll have n minus three places that we can put three circles because now we have to leave off the last two spots as starting points. And then we're building block fountains on top of that. So that'll be multiplied by the number of block fountains B3. And then this will be all the way up to, well, how many places can we put in minus one circles? Well, there's only one spot because we have to use up every one of these openings above our n circles. But we're building block fountains on top, so that'll be times bn minus one. So in other words, it's like one times bn minus one. And so that builds our recursion. And now we can put this together to see that bn is equal to one plus the sum as m goes from one to n minus one of m minus n times b sub m. That's just putting that all together into like some nice package. Okay, so we've got this nice recursion here and we talked about how many block fountains there are for small values of n just by drawing pictures, but let's see if those numbers that we got out of the pictures correspond to what's going on with this recursion. Okay, so here's the recursion that we just came up with. Now we're gonna explore the numbers we get out of this recursion and compare them to what we got from drawing pictures. Okay, so B1 is pretty clearly equal to one, but notice that's also one plus, the sum as M goes from one to zero, but any times you go from one to zero, that's like an empty sum. That's how we like interpret that. Okay, so B sub one is one, but now what's B sub two? Well, by pictures, we calculated that to be two, but notice that's also equal to one plus two minus one times B1. So good, so the formula that we came up with here corresponds to what we know from experimentation. Now let's look at B sub three. So by pictures, we saw that that should be five, but let's make sure it works with this. So we have one plus three minus one times B one plus three minus two times B two. Okay, but that's gonna be one plus two plus another two. In other words, the number five. So that works as well. So let's look at B four and we'll have one plus four minus one times B one plus four minus two times B two plus four minus three times B three. And you can work all of that out and you'll see that you get 13. And then maybe we'll look at one more B five and you'll see that after doing all the calculation there, you get 34. So let's look at these numbers here. So maybe I'll put them here in this green box and see if we can see some structure. So we have one first and then two, and then after that is five and then 13 and then 34. And I put a little gap here because we can fit some numbers in between that'll give it a lot more structure, enough so that we can guess the maybe closed form here. So let's put a one here in the middle and we'll put a three here in the middle, an eight here between five and 13, and then we'll put a 21 between 13 and 34. And you'll see that, oh, well those are now the Fibonacci numbers. And so the B numbers, which are in white chalk, those seem to be odd indexed Fibonacci numbers. And that brings us up to the following guess for our closed form for B sub n. And that is B sub n should be F sub two n minus one. In other words, like I said, the odd indexed Fibonacci number. Okay, so let's see if we can prove that. So everything we've done so far boils down to the following claim that the number of block fountains within starting circles is equal to the two n minus first Fibonacci number. And just as a recall, those are the rules that generate the Fibonacci numbers. So we're gonna prove this by induction, starting with the base case, which is, you know, that's already done with our examples. So let's make an induction hypothesis. So let's suppose for some k bigger than or equal to one, 
we have, well, the statement holds. So in other words, b sub k is equal to f sub 2k minus 1. And now let's consider the next case. In other words, we want to consider b sub k plus 1. But that combinatorial argument that we worked to have the recursion on the bk's, that held for everything. So that means we can apply that here. So that's going to be equal to 1 plus the sum as m goes from 1 to, well, k plus 1 minus 1, aka k, of k plus 1 minus m b sub m. Okay, great. But now what I'd like to do is take this sum and split some stuff off of it so that we can maybe apply our induction hypothesis. Okay, so what I'll split off of it is this. So I'm going to split this off into the sum as m goes from 1 to k minus 1 of k minus m times b sub m. Okay, so I've got my k minus m b sub m there, and here I'm stopping one short. Okay, so that means I need to add some more stuff in. So I need to add a lonely b k in, so that'll be the top term. That's one thing that I need to add in. And I also need to add what's coming from this plus one. So that'll just be a sum of a bunch of b sub m's. And so it'll look like this. So plus the sum, as m goes from 1 to k of b sub m. Oh, and that should be k minus 1. Okay, so that's how that splits off. And now that I look at this, I notice that I actually need something called strong induction instead of regular induction because I'd like to apply my induction hypothesis to all of this. So let's maybe clear that up. So let's suppose for k minus 1, or k bigger than 1, we have, instead of this holding, we have b sub m is equal to f sub 2m minus 1 for all, 1 less than or equal to m less than or equal to k. So that does it. That changes our regular induction hypothesis to a strong induction hypothesis. Okay, so now let's see if we can write this out. So now we'll have 1 plus the sum as m goes from 1 to k minus 1 of k minus m times b sub m, and then plus b sub k. But we know the b sub k is, well, it's a Fibonacci number by the induction hypothesis. So I'll write that as f sub 2k minus 1. And then next, we'll have the sum as m goes from 1 to k minus 1 of b sub m. But that's also going to be a sum of Fibonacci numbers. So it'll be f sub 1 plus f sub 3 ending at f sub 2k minus 3. Okay, great. But now let's simplify this. Notice that by our recursion, we know exactly what this is. This is exactly b sub k, but since it's b sub k, we can apply our induction hypothesis to see it as f sub 2k minus 1. And then look, we've got another f sub 2k minus 1. And then we've got this object right here. And here I'm going to use a fact which I won't prove, and that's the sum of odd indexed Fibonacci numbers. So in fact, that sum will be the next even indexed Fibonacci number. So in other words, it will be f sub 2k minus 2. And that's kind of like a well-known fact. So next up, I'll apply the Fibonacci recursion to those two. That'll allow us to write this as f sub 2k minus 1 plus f sub 2k. And then finally, I'll apply the Fibonacci recursion to those two to leave us with f sub 2k plus 1. But that's in fact exactly where we needed to end up if we started here, that's the format that we needed for b sub k plus 1 to finish this proof by induction. So there we've done it. We found a nice formula for the number of block fountains in this case in terms of maybe one of the most well-known sequences. And that's a good place to see.
Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.